Renee Powell, and today I'm standing on the set where, as they say in show business, the magic used to happen. This was once a set of Back in the Day Friday, and today on Looking Back, we'll take you behind the scenes and give you an inside story on the rise and fall of the once beloved show. Let's take a look and see how it all started. Welcome to Back in the Day Friday with Old Man Nevin. So, Old Man Nevin, what do you have for us today? Well, I've got an authentic Back in the Day item, uh -huh. Driggsy. Uh, how old are you? I'm 14, Old Man Nevin. Well, this is from way, way back in the day, way farther back in the day than your day. What do you think that is? Is it a car phone? Yeah, it's a car phone. Drink. Hello, Mom, Grandma. No, it's not a car phone. I was watching an old movie the other day, and the characters were watching a TV that has two long, thin metal rods on top of it. Do you know what these were and what they were used for? Well, that's a great question, Samantha. Good job noticing some back-in-the-day artifacts when you watch your TV on your Netflix or whatever you kids watch it on today. So, back in my day, we didn't have these crystal clear, perfect pictures when we turn on the television. Those are called rabbit ears. They're antennas. And so, they stick up off the TV kind of yay like this. And you got to get them just right. So, you got to kind of move it around. That's good, Riggsy. Let's check right. it out. So, you got to move it around, get it just to the right spot to get a clear picture in. We've gathered co hosts and crew members from back in the day Friday. And today, for the first time, they'll give us an inside take on what made the show an overnight success and what caused it to fall apart so fast. In the start of Back in the Day Friday, we were all pretty excited about it. I think people really liked Back in the Day Friday. The show, it was huge. People loved it. I started on Back in the Day Friday and the show was a really big hit. It was like really popular around. Okay. Um, mailbags were packed 24-7. So many people liked it and sent such good feedback. It they loved seeing the artifacts and just really being able to connect with the audience. I mean, we were seeing some new artifacts that none of us had ever seen before. Oh, here we go. What do you think, what do you think this is? My favorites um, were probably the Polaroid. This is the Polaroid camera, the vintage, vintage Polaroid SX-70 Sonar One Step Land Camera. The slide rule. This is a slide rule. The slide rule. So, you ever heard of a slide rule? No. No, this is something that, that's uh, been forgotten pretty quickly, was real prominent until not too long ago. Film projector. This is Ethan. He's brought in a back in the day artifact. What do we have here, Ethan? It's a vintage film reel projector. Back in the day, Friday shot to the top of ratings, but it wasn't long before problems set in. It began with the controversial firing of Ryan Driggers, the popular co-host. No one stays on top forever, and for Back in the Day Friday, the crash came fast. I tried to promote it on social media, but old man Nevitt flipped out and went crazy. No clue why, guess he's just not hip enough. Welcome to Back in the Day Friday. I'm here with old man Nevitt. I'm Eliza and I'm filling in for Ryan. He's on suspension. That's right, we had to suspend Driggsy. He tried to sign us up for one of those Twittergram accounts. We don't do that kind of socialist media um, here on Back in the Day. Mr. Nevitt? Uh-huh. It's social. So, if you don't think that socialist media is a commie plot to unite the proletariat, you've got another thing coming, Lizzie. When I was fired, it was complete disappointment. I was devastated. The show slowly start to go down on the ratings, things started to go crazy. When Ryan got fired off the show, we were all really surprised. We were all just standing there, and we didn't agree with him um, getting fired. Nobody saw it coming. It was devastating because he was such a great person, and he was so much fun to be around, and then he just got fired. After the controversial firing of Ryan Driggers, problems continued to mount. They came to a climax with an incident that the press would dub soon as Iron Gate. Uh, out, out there, Lizzie, we'll show you how it's done. Okay. So, um, now, if, uh, if this hurts, just, uh, you know, if something's burning, if you smell burning hair, just raise your arm up uh, in the air. So, okay. you, take, uh, you take the length of the hair. Maybe you want to start at the bottom here. Um, we got a little, uh, 
water there to, uh, to make sure we don't burn you up too bad. Now, don't attempt this at home. We're trained professionals here. So you'll start here. Ow! Um, ow! The biggest controversy is when Old Man never ironed Eliza's hair. Um, I walked out of the building that day and there were so many people, they were all really angry. Everyone went crazy when they saw that. They just assumed that we were hurting her. We wouldn't do that. We would have put someone in danger. The iron wasn't even on. Old man Nevitt got so paranoid and worried about something huge happening again that one episode, he just flipped through encyclopedia. All this page turning is making me tired. My hand is starting to cramp. Ratings continued to plummet until finally the show came to an abrupt halt with the mysterious disappearance of Old Man Nevitt. I heard Old Man Nevitt was working at a souvenir shop in a wax museum. I heard he had his own antique shop. Some people say he's in a mental hospital, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was. What happened to old man Nevitt? Was there foul play involved? Or was he just tired of the harsh glare of the spotlight? Despite all of the rumors, our attempts to locate old man Nevitt have led nowhere. But wherever he is, you can be sure he's telling someone about the incredible wonders of what life was all about back in the day. <laughs>